Good evening. We're going to kick it off here in one minute. Hopefully my audio is good. I'm always paranoid about that now. Always waiting for the delay on YouTube. Good evening. We're going to kick it off here in one minute. Yeah, there we go. Okay, got to mute myself in the background and kick this off here right there. Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB and really looking forward to this one. We're going to be talking to Charlie in J7 Victor. I keep getting his call sign wrong because it's different. <laughs> it's a two by one. And I always want to call him in Victor 7J, but he's in J7 Victor. So <clears throat> thanks for joining us tonight. We'll bring Charlie on here in just a little bit. He's with the, uh, for those who don't know, he's with the Red Summit RF YouTube channel. And in fact, you know what? I think I forgot to put the description or the link to his channel in the description of my own video. So I'll go grab that real quick and share it in the chat. And then I can... Uh, update the description later there we are right there yeah there he is so let me put that over there okay that's the link to charlie's channel he's going to be joining us here in just a bit tonight so <clears throat> great um great to have you guys tonight hopefully everyone is staying warm out there people are in the chat talking about uh i've been at the deer lease for the last um well since thursday we got home uh or late 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 morning today and did uh of course my put up my uh best ht for the hunting lease video a couple weeks ago and our last week i think it was and got some got some really good feedback on that and i got some i got some good questions being asked and it gave me some new ideas for some new videos so gonna be doing a lot of that uh upcoming because deer season's another month and a half roughly and we've got such a large pig population this year that we can keep going and the pigs are open season you shoot pigs anytime you want to so even after deer season ends we'll be able to go out there and go hog hunting some so really um really looking forward to that <clears throat> always something with the clearing the throat okay so good evening to don and 5skt good to have you in the house andy cowley good evening tonight don Izzo, uh a name a name good to see you tonight uh there's tom k or I'm sorry, that's not Tom. Uh, there's uh, Eric and uh, Greg. Oh, and there's uh, KB1HQS. See you in there. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good to have you guys in the stream tonight. I did want to go through a couple of things real quick because let me fix this real fast because this is uh, stuff I keep getting asked about right there. And um, I still get the question about online testing uh, one of my one of my breakout videos for 2020 one of them that did uh, really well I'll turn that off and at the beginning of uh, well the be beginning of all the lockdowns there's there was this big push to get um, online testing to become a reality in ham radio and I did a video back then and it got a lot of exposure it got a lot of uh, a lot for for a Channel my size, it got a whole lot of views. It's at like 55,000 now. Um, but I did three or four follow-ups on it with the progression of how online testing was progressing through amateur radio over the next few months. But I still get the question. I was like, hey, when is, when's online testing going to become a reality? Well, it has been a reality basically since May of this year. So you can go to hamstudy.org forward slash sessions, and you can look. This is the latest. I've, I've got this website up right now. This is the very latest in the realm of pull that up there right there okay so this is the very latest in uh the scheduling so you can see it's got today's date december 6th sunday and you can scroll down here and you know a lot of these are full uh they depend on what day of the week it is depend on what time it is you know if it's after business hours it's full but they've got it all the way through the end of the year january 15th is still going and there's um there are sessions in there for both online, all online, remote, completely remote, and for 
in-person testing. So you can go through and find some like in your state that might be near you if you don't want to do an online thing. Some people don't want to do that, and that's okay. But there's multiple options, and they're all in this link here. So that's a really great um, resource to keep a, a watch on. If you want to, if you're interested in online testing, if you're interested in, in an upgrade, if you're interested in, uh, if you're, if you're some, if your club is somehow a part of teaching a class, and you're not set up to do testing yet, you can go find a testing uh, solution here, online or in person, and you can show that to people after you present after you um, get, uh, present a class over Zoom. There's several several. Um, Clubs still doing classes, technician general classes over Zoom, which brings me to, to my next point. I don't have any details on this yet, but sometime in mid-January, the North Richland Hills Amateur Radio Club out here in, in North Texas in uh, halfway in what, what we call mid-cities out here, they're the guys who I did a live stream of the general class last May. I think it was May, April, May, somewhere in there. And those those are up for replay, and I still get people watching and commenting on those today. They are going to do an extra class. Let me say that again. <laughs> they are going to do an extra class via Zoom. It's going to be five Saturdays, but they're not going to all be in a row. I think they're going to, it's going to go, it's going to start before, it's going to start like mid-January and go through like mid-February because they're going to skip the weekend of winter field day. So they're not going to do the winter field day Saturday. At least that's the tentative plan right now. The tentative plan right now is to do a Zoom session for, I think it's five Saturdays in a row, 8.30 or 9 a.m. Central Time till like 4 or 5 p.m. Um, Central Time. We won't be live streaming this. I'm not going to be live streaming it. It's kind of, there's too many things going on in my own schedule to, live, to, to set aside five Saturdays in a row to live stream. And the guy teaching this class doesn't want to live stream and I don't blame him. I don't want, I, I don't, you know, he's like, eh, I don't know about live streaming. He's some people are more camera shy than other people. There's no problem with that, but he, he, ha, he has agreed to allow me to record it and then I can edit it up and post it later. So that should be coming soon. More to come on that. Um, as far as I know, they're going to allow people to sign up to join the zoom session and be there during the class. So as soon as I have that information, I will send that out to everybody. I'll talk about it on my lunchtime live streams. If you guys haven't signed up yet, you can go over here to my email list and sign up. I try to keep everything there. It's uh well that 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 link works as well. Uh hamradio2.com forward slash email dash sign up and you can and this link right here will also work. Uh, so you can sign up on the email list. I try to keep everything up there. So as soon as I have more information on that, I will absolutely be sharing that for because I know a lot of people have been looking forward to that. Tomorrow night is Monday Night Ham Radio. Those of you who have not been keeping up with Monday Night Ham Radio, uh, we've been doing some really cool stuff. Uh, myself and several other YouTubers get together on Monday night, and we just kind of will schedule our premieres together. I'll I'll go at 5.30, someone might go at 5, or someone might go after me at 6, and 6.30 and 7. Uh, Steve, KM9G, temporarily offline, he does a live stream every Monday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. So generally, we start around 5 or 5.30, and we'll do premieres f across multiple channels, and then it'll the, the, the night will end with Steve doing his Ham Nuggets live stream starting at 8 p.m., and it usually goes for about an hour. Tomorrow night is an extra special night. I think I'm pretty sure it was the Smoke and Apes idea to come up with a, a theme night. Well, this theme, somebody came up with the idea of a theme night a couple months ago. We did a theme night for the G90. We did a theme night for Ham Shack, uh, your workbench and or Ham Shack tour. Um, that Ham Shack tour video did really well on my channel. Tomorrow night is two meter night. The theme tomorrow is two meters. Just whatever you want to talk about, two meters. Uh, my particular... Video is about a 100-watt, 2-meter mobile radio from QIT. But um, TO's got one about the world's most tactical 2-meter antenna. Okay. Uh, how to build a fox hunt transmitter. Uh, Ape has a DIY 2-meter ground plane build. And uh, Tank, uh, Frank will be on tomorrow night. Basic concepts for satellite communication on 2 meters. <laughs> so Frank can't be here tonight. I should have said that up front. He had, a, uh, he had something come up, I think. And um, here's the playlist link for tomorrow night, uh, Monday Night Ham Radio. 
He te Frank texted me earlier today, and he's like, dude, I thought your live stream was next week. I totally bombed that. I was like, dude, don't worry about it. It's fine. I got Charlie coming on tonight, so it's uh, it's not going to be a bad um, a bad thing. So, yeah, so Monday Night Ham Radio, you can go through the list. I just put the, the link to it in the chat there. Twelve videos, including Ham Nuggets Live wrap-up on T.O.'s channel uh, starting at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. So that's quite the lineup. That's quite the lineup of videos. I'm looking forward to it. It's always a fun night to get on there and um, talk about whatever, Money Not Ham Radio, to, to see the audience uh, go from video to video to video. If you click on the playlist link that I just shared and click on the first video on top of that playlist, from that playlist link, and it'll kick off at 4.50 p.m. Central Time, and if you just let it go, it'll auto-roll to the next video makes it really easy. So all you need is one link for the playlist, which is on uh, KM9G's channel, and, uh, and and it should start about 4.50 tomorrow evening. So I will be there for that in the, uh, in the chats. So hope to see you guys there. Something new I started. Oh, that's tube buddy for you right there. Something new I started is, this is kind of like my original channel, and it is... I, I did a lot of, I did some daily vlogging from the island of Galveston back when COVID started. That's what all this stuff is here. Um, but here recently I started to rethink, well, I started to rethink it a while back. Here recently I actually started to act on my rethinking. So what I'm going to do is build this channel into how to build a YouTube channel for ham radio. Now it's not going to just apply to ham radio it'll be more generalized than that but i'm going to show you how i built my youtube channel here so that um link to that channel is right there and i will post that right now so seriously anybody wishing anybody wishing to do youtube as a ham radio operator hit me up I'd be interested to talk to you about it. I put that video up, and I had like four guys email me the next day. I was surprised. I'm like, really? Maybe there's more interest out there than I expected. So, um, yeah. How to build a YouTube channel. Yes, at Ham Radio, but not necessarily just Ham Radio. So, that ought to be fun. I'm looking forward to, to uh, jacking around with that some a little bit, because uh, it's it's definitely a fun, fun time. And then there's my, my email sign-up again. So... Let's uh, let's move over here real quick. I'm going to minimize that. Yeah, minimize that there. And uh, appreciate you guys being here tonight. Oh, there's Tom, N3WS. Thanks for joining tonight. Oh, there's Chris, Digital Analog Ham. Hey, I saw you in there earlier, Chris. And Hayden, Ham Radio DX. Thanks for joining. Um, thanks for joining that tonight. Appreciate you guys being in the chat. Yeah, people are talking about Monday Night Ham Radio. Uh, yeah, that should be really fun tomorrow night. So let me pull over Charlie here. And we're going to be talking about some summits on the air. La, la, la. And there's that. And there you are. Hey, Charlie, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. It's a good day today. <laughs> awesome. Good. Hey, you guys, let us know in the chat if our audio is even. If I'm too loud, he's too loud, whichever. Uh, let us know in the chat which one it is, and I can adjust accordingly. So how'd your live stream go? You do a live stream. It's, I, I couldn't remember if you went at 5 or at 6, but I, I saw that yeah. you were at 6, and I popped in there for about the first 10 minutes or so, and then I left because I like to kind of set up my stuff and make sure... Streamlabs isn't going to totally bomb on me <laughs> when I go live at night, so yeah. it's always a process. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I actually pick the time uh, to go just before you to see if I can get some, get some of your viewers. Yeah. So, so I was hitching on you, so so it's easy to remember. I'm I'm just before you, an hour before you. So good. And uh, I'm I'm every other week though, and uh, I guess you're going to be maybe doing every week soon, right? You know, I'm I. <sighs> I said I was. I said I, w yeah. I said in January I was going to start going every week. I'm still trying to decide whether I want to do that or not. That's quite, that's quite the time commitment. You know, my hat's off to like to folks like um, like Josh who does every Saturday, and I guess uh, To now is doing every Monday, and I think Steve uh, K5ATA usually does Wednesdays. Man, those guys, <laughs> that's a commitment. 
it's, it really is. I mean, I'm, I mean, every t- every other week for me, that's plenty. I right. enjoy them though. Uh, I mean, last tonight's live stream was, I think, the best one we've had, and it, it was. I really ha- I learned a lot and enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, every other week it'll do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I gotta. I might try it out the first. Um, I might try it out every week in January and kind of see how I like it. We'll see. Uh, my wife and I are talking about going down to our Galveston house in February and staying for the whole month. Because that's usually a dead month. There's not many people renting it during that time of year. And if I do that, it's really hard to live stream down there because the internet's terrible. So I'm going to have to figure something else out for that. Um, I might be able to use a hotspot. I might be able to go to like a bar or something and put a headset on. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. It's going to be a challenge for sure. Yeah. So uh, (laughs) anyway. Somebody be bumping into you and spilling a beer over you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and I did one from a coffee shop for one of my Wednesday live streams. I did one from a coffee shop down there, and there was no. It was Wednesday in the middle of the day, and there was nobody there. But and it worked fine. But I, as far as numbers go, I didn't have as many people watching that one because I just called it live stream from from Galveston, and I don't think anybody cared. <laughs> so. <laughs> So it's all, okay, you know. Uh, so I got to figure. So I, I I have to come up with a theme if I actually want to want to yeah. do it. But but there you go. So stay away from Calveston, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No kidding. So cool, man. Well, hey, I thought I'd bring you on and we talk about some summits on the air stuff, which is what you're um quote famous for, or what that's kind of what you built your channel around. Yeah, that's and, my niche for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have. Uh, yeah, my my I, I built the YouTube channel completely around summits on the air. I'm I'm expanding a little bit, but yeah, I've really it's a really niched channel for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I just uh, I don't know about a year ago started it, and uh, I'd been thinking about it a year before that, mm-hmm. and just thought you know I, I I get out on all these really beautiful amazing peaks, and I don't I, I'm the only one that enjoys them. And so I thought, you know, I had to, I had to share some of these. And then on top of that, a lot of times I get questions about people saying, hey, how'd you get up there? Or what route did you take? Or what does it look like up there? So I thought I'd just kind of start documenting it. And uh, it just kind of went from there. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So um, so now, are are you in Southern California also? Nah, Arizona. You're in Arizona. Okay, that's, that's yeah. Adam who's in Southern. I knew Adam was yes. in SoCal. I couldn't remember if you were in the same spot or not. Um, I know you've told me, I just, I just forgot. That's um, okay. yeah. but, um, <laughs> somebody said in the chat, this is ham radio 2.0 live from McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. Yeah. So, a uh, hamburger. Right, right. Totally. So cool. Cool. So, um, so tell us, well, first of all, uh, <clears throat> go, in you, in your words, I want to know how you describe it. What is summits on the air for people who may not know? And uh, and what got you into it after you, after you kind of explain it? Okay, well, first of all, uh, I would like to say that summits on the what summits on the air is not, hmm. and it is not a contest. And unless you're contesting with yourself, right. and uh, I think most people have goals and they try to reach them and they uh, are competing with themselves for those goals. But what summits on the air is is a point system in which you can either chase or uh, hike to a top of a summit, and when you ha- reach four contacts when you're on a summit, or if you just get one contact if you're chasing, then you get to count the points for a specific peak that you may be on or be chasing. It's not every peak that uh, that qualifies. There's a certain qualification that a peak has to have in order to to qualify for for points that you can earn. But you earn the points, and then after uh, you accumulate them for a while, then then you end up getting. Uh, the coveted mountain goat or the shack sloth, and uh, those w- awards are, are uh, you know, most most people are a lot of people strive for those, and mm-hmm. a lot of people get those, and some don't. But uh, it's it's fun to to kind of mix in all other kind of uh, self uh, imposed goals to to on your way there, or even after you've done your you reached your goals. So uh, really, just a, just a point system where you uh, eventually. Uh, achieve a certain number of points and and uh, receive an award. Um, there are other types of awards you can receive other than a mountain goat and a uh, shack sloth. There are uh, po- you can receive points for doing so many summits on the air. Uh, sorry, so many uh, summit to summit contacts. Oh right. And uh, there's th- that's tracked and, and unique summits is contract is a is a track. So 
for um, the for the for the shack sloth. I want to make sure I say that right because it's yeah. that could be a tongue twister. Um, does the person are those counted from just the log of the actual summit activator? Yes. Okay. So because that's a, how the parks a... on the air works, and I wasn't sure if the person sitting at home making contacts to all these different summits had to log had to submit a log also, or if it's just oh, done from the... maybe I misunderstood you. Then you don't have to submit a log. You submit a log for your own points, but you, it, there's no uh, confirmation that happens. Right, so yeah. It's so on your honor. Right. So, so, so for parks on the air, and I think summits on the air is like this. So for parks on the air, the person activating the park submits the log, and the person sitting at home gets the points because their call sign is in the log, but the person sitting at home doesn't have to submit an, oh. an additional log. Oh, that is different then. For okay. Sure. It is yeah. different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll... so if you're a chaser, you have a log that you okay. log each of your uh, summits that you've chased and it's completely independent and separate from the, the activators. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ch ch is that what it's called a chaser? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. See, you don't have to do that in parks on the air. You just kind of, all, all you do is make, like you can watch their um, parksontheair.com. They have a uh, they have a, a spotter page on their website, and you can yeah. watch and see who's where. You know, people spot themselves and say, "I'm at this park on this frequency." And if you go make the contact, if you confirm the contact over the air, then the person at home, the chaser at home, doesn't have to do anything further because they're in the log. And then, the, assuming the parks on the air person submits a log, which you know, ninety nine percent of the time they do, then the person who made the the chaser contact at home gets credit. So you can go look yourself up and see. How many of these guys have said yes? I've talked to him and that kind of thing. Oh, well, that's a good system. I, you know, yeah. I knew there was a way. I knew there was a reason. Uh, it was frowned upon not to send your log in, and I am guilty of that. I've I've made I've done maybe three or four POTA activations, and I've never sent my logs in. And so, <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> oops. Uh, yeah, oops. <laughs> well, oh well. I mean, you know what? Now that you mentioned that. Frank came with me to one of my POTA activations recently, and he made a bunch of contacts the first time he's ever done it. And I told him to go sign up, sign up on the website, which he did. But he's like, okay, now I need to know how to submit a log. And I don't think he ever did that. So, what, yeah. Which I think that's my fault, though, because I, I told him I showed him how to do that. So, okay, uh, that was a good clarification of what the uh, Shack Sloth is. But uh, Mountain Goat is 1,000 points? Mountain Goat is 1,000 points, yes. Okay. And uh, the most points you can you can reach or you can uh, acquire in any one summit mm -hmm. would be thirteen. Okay. So a, a summit is is typically no more than ten points. Uh, but if you activate it during a bonus season, you can get an extra three. Okay. So the most that you'd ever earn is thirteen. Uh, but uh, there's a one point peak, and then there's two, four, six, eight, and ten point peaks. Okay. And that's it. And then possibly bonus points. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So even if you go up there and sit there for like a whole weekend and make a hundred contacts, it still only get still caps your points. Yes, you only you only get the ten point, and and you only can activate that peak for the points once a year. Right, and it's on the calendar year. So January, a lot of times people like to double up and do some, do an activation January one. You know, right right at the at the crossover. Oh and yeah, and they get they get the double points because they're they activated on each side either side of uh, of the UTC zero. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's a good. Uh, that's a good idea. Okay. Cool. All right. So tell us about uh, how you got started in it then. Well, I uh, started just kind of with field day, I think. You know, and I, I was I was involved in ham radio and field day, and and I was just out kind of hiking. I I honestly can't remember how who I first learned about it from, mm -hmm. but uh, I was interested in it, and I, I I I think I saw it on a website or something. Then I went to our our uh, club meeting. Uh, at, it's the the uh, Superstition Amateur Radio Club, and a friend of mine, Brian W7JET, he was given a presentation on summits on the air, and mm -hmm. my mind had been on it, and I wanted to know more. I just kind of didn't didn't know, you know, how, how to do it. And after the presentation, I approached him and said, "Hey, I'd like to do this," and he said, "Okay, well, let's go on go on a peak then." And and he took me up on my first peak up on Mount Peely, and uh, we we activated. I didn't even take any gear with me. He took all the gear and just kind of showed me. The ropes and, and let me make a few contacts but it's funny that up on top of that peak we uh, we encountered a couple and uh, the the guy proposed to his wife right up there while we were operating <laughs> nice that's cool so, okay a memorable peak for a couple reasons <laughs> yeah no doubt oh that's fun okay yeah so after that you know i so i i i, uh, I 
Pele Mountain was great, and so then I after that I just kind of hopped on it myself, and I bought a FT817 a short time later, and and then uh, made an antenna for it, and and away I went, you know, and mm-hmm. I was sideband for sideband only with well sideband and, and two meter FM for most of my activations for the first year or so, and then you know it's it's really opens up a lot of doors when you can do Morse code because mm-hmm. I'd say 80% of the operators, just a guess, 80% do Morse code, you know. And although more and more sideband guys are coming on board, but it was just, it was just, uh, it made sense to me to get more contacts that way and to have a little bit more fun. So uh, eventually I, I, I uh, made the switch over to CW and, mm-hmm. and, uh, that's what I've been doing ever since. How long have you known CW? I'd say probably two years now. Okay. Okay. Roughly. So you're, yeah, you're yeah. fairly new at it then. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, that's after doing, I've only ever done one soda event in my life and it was about a year ago. <laughs> Um, and it was in outside of LA. We went out to, uh, Sterling and Kyle and I, and a couple other guys uh, flew out to meet Josh out there for his event that he set up. And, um, and we, we all, <laughs> we all had Ellicraft KX twos and threes. Um, but I don't think anybody did sideband that weekend. I think most of us, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think anybody did CW that weekend. I think most of us were doing sideband, but after watching your videos and, and, and Adam's videos, I'm like, yeah, I need to, uh, I need to, and I actually took, uh, the CW Academy, I actually took that f- during January and February of this year, and I did okay, but I need to go through yeah. it another one or two times, something like that, and just, I, I haven't yeah. been practicing, but, uh, but you're right, I think that, uh, it, t- especially with those mountain topper type radio, or that style of radio that runs on such low power, um, it's easier to carry in that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I, I, I can imagine that there's a lot more people on the CW bands being doing yeah. that sort of, that sort of ham radio work. So, yeah. Well, what's interesting, you bring that up the, uh, the CW uh, and you being in the CW Academy, mm-hmm. I did a presentation to the long Island CW club and the presentation was on how uh, summits on the air facilitated my learning CW. Because I think, I'm, I strongly believe, in fact, that, that uh, you've got to use CW all the time, at least once a week. And uh, a lot of people have said that. Well, if you're really into something that requires CW, then you're going to do it, right? And so I, yeah. I was on the summit every week, and I had, every week I had an opportunity to practice and to build my skills. It was really horrible at first, but, uh, but over time I, I, I really learned. And, and you're right, just consistency and, and uh, learning uh, CW is it's just about consistency and, and trying to get, uh, get on the air often. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I mean – you know, I, I got to where I could send fairly well. I could send my call sign and I could send Grapevine, Grapevine TX. I could I got to where I could send, but man, I just couldn't I couldn't listen to it worth a darn. I just I that's the that's the thing I needed to practice on. But I think I'm probably gonna s- sign up and go through that that course again. Um, yeah, I might. And you know, you and several other people have talked about Long Island CW Club. I might try that one out too. It's a little bit different learning style, I think. So yeah, you know, might yeah, be well. Good. The, the big secret here is that I uh, have joined both of those uh, training sessions relatively recently, within the last six months. Okay. And I, 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 I'm 20 words a minute, you know, and I, and I uh, consistently do that on the summit. But even I have a really hard time sometimes copying, especially when it's rag chewing. I'm not the greatest at it. I can't copy that well. I know the, I know the stuff for, for CW. Mm-hmm. I got that down pretty good. I can copy probably 25 words a minute in my head if you're if they're just sending their call sign and the yeah. and the re- signal report but when they start going off saying hey keep warm or, or uh, have fun or any of that sometimes it, it just scrambles and i'm done yeah you know, i can't I, I just can't copy it so i'm right there with you yeah 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 and that's what and they kept talking about this thing they say you need to learn instant recognition and i'm like that's great how do you do that? <laughs> because it's like, I'm like, yeah. you know, I mean, it makes sense. You, you hear da 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 and you're like, oh, that's an A, that's a B, that's a C. Okay, good. I mean, I, I can understand CQ. I know what CQ sounds like. I know what SOS sounds like. But right. instant recognition for, I mean, I yeah, I, I, I never got there. I mean, I, and it's just practice. It's just practice all of it. I just need it to is. practice. But uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Cool. So how many, um, how many points do you have mountain goat status yet? Yes, okay. I am working on um, what is it? I I have uh, two. I, I'm at two thousand eight hundred points, roughly. Okay. So I am almost on my. Th- I'm almost re- uh, you know round the horn a third time on Mountain Goat. Yeah. Okay. And does yeah. do, do those points start over every year? 
or is it just nope? Okay. It's just a, a continual accumulation. Okay. And I mean, some people might think that's pretty amazing, but but uh, when you compare it to some of the people around the world, I mean, some people have you know, f- uh, fifteen, twenty goats, you know, 20,000 wow. points or more. <laughs> and, and as far as chasing goes, there's some people who have, you know, 150, 150 goats. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So 150,000 yeah. points. Wow. I, it's just, you know, I, yeah. I, here I am, I'm at 3,800, I think for, for a goat. And I think I'm, I'm going around, I'm over 7,000 for chasing somewhere, but, oh, okay. but uh, yeah, it's just, it's fun. It's just fun. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. So it's just the, uh, it's just the, the number of times you can activate a peak that resets once a year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Hmm. I wonder why they do that. Seems, I guess they're just trying to get more peaks activated. I think, you know, if you, if you could activate the same peak every day, then, you know, you'd, it, you know what I mean? Yeah. That might be kind of, yeah. Kind if of you defeat, go back, you know, I, if I go it. over the lone mountain every day for, you know, it's only two points, but if I hit it every day, I could get a mountain goat and probably, you know, Three months or whatever that's true it's, it's not yeah. that challenging that's true yep yep so what's um so like it, it that that one you just mentioned i'm not familiar with is that uh real fast to get up there yeah I, it's one of my favorite peaks it's because it's it's a mile i think maybe at the okay. very most a mile and a half and mm-hmm. it's a and it's a uh, maintained trail to the top it's probably 500 feet of elevation gain is all okay so it's not that bad i mean i could i could go up there activate it and be back home uh you know and two, three hours maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. So there's yeah, one. That's where I take a lot of people who are new. Ah, okay. There's it's one a, down a... south of me, like uh, um, Johnny from uh, Signal Search YouTube channel. He's There's one down there. He uh, He's down in Austin, I think, or San Antonio, mm-hmm. one of those. And he's he was telling me about one down outside of, I want to say it was outside of um, like Corsicana or somewhere down there. I can't remember where it was. Somewhere it's, two or three hours south of where I'm at. And we don't, we don't get a lot of, there's not, there's not very many mountains in Texas. I mean, there are, if you go way up in the panhandle or way down to big Bend, which is like six to eight to 10 hours from here, depending on where you go. But in this area where I'm at, I can't get to, to a summit in an hour or two. I'd have to mm. actually, you know, drive somewhere. I'd want to hike up the summit, activate it and come back, you know, and stay overnight or something. Cause I'm not yeah, going to yeah. drive six hours there and activate it and come back the same day. So mm, that's unfortunate. Yeah. So it's, that's, that's, that's one reason why parks on the air has been so, um, appealing to mm. myself and several other people around here because, you know, there's, there's no mountains, there's, yeah. there's no mountains and there's parks here and you can drive up and activate it and go home. So, <laughs> so it's fun, yeah. but it's, it's, um, it's definitely something I want to do. And I was, he had mentioned I don't remember what I was watching one of his videos and he had mentioned something about doing a park that was really or a peak that was close to him. So I emailed him. I'm like, dude, let's uh, let's let's get together and do that. And he has a newborn. He's like, I'm not really getting together with people right now due to COVID. I'm like, that's cool. You know, I I totally get that. No problem at all. I was like, tell me where this place is you got. And he told me I was like, okay, I'm going to go do this one of these days. But I waited till the weather was too cold. Now, I don't know. Maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll go next month. Maybe I'll wait until it gets warm. I'm not sure yet. (laughs) Yeah. But, well, you know, the thing about about either Poda, I've done some Poda, but not much, but mm-hmm. Poda or specifically Soda is, you know, I was into it for the points and to get that mountain goat. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I really enjoyed doing that. And and my operating during that point of my of uh, of my life was was, you know, stay on the, the peak no more than an hour. Get your four contacts. If you get 10, fine. If you get 20, great. But the but that's it, you know, and then I move on to the next peak. Try to get two, three, if you can, four peaks in a day. So I was I was in the points mode. After I got my mountain goat, it really switched for me to enjoy being on the peak and enjoy, and take it all in and enjoy the park, and also experiment. And so I've been doing more of that, and I've I've really be, uh, started to enjoy it. And yeah, you can do that at home or anywhere really. But the great thing about Poda and Soda is you're automatically a uh, almost like a DX. Right. So you have a you get the pileups. Mm-hmm. And so you can really test your gear out and you can really, you know, work through a lot of people. You wouldn't get that if you were just, you know, sitting at home a lot of times. No. So that's why I love it so much. Mm-hmm. So I, I totally agree. Yeah, that's one of the things that and I've heard some guys talk about how parks on the air is, you know, they maybe they 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 got their general upgrade and get, they can't do anything at home because they're in an apartment or in an HOA. They can't put up an antenna and like, man, parks on the air has really uh, 
uh, helped to fuel my interest in HF because I can't do HF at home. I'm like, well, yeah. that's a good uh, that's a good program to have, I think. And Summits on the Air, it, I mean, the thing I like about Summits on the Air is that it kind of it kind of marries together the whole hiking aspect, which I've or what they what they currently call what is it called rucking, I guess to <laughs> I ruck. Guess. So I heard that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so yeah. Go go ruck dot com is 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 one site, and they they call it yeah. There it's kind of like a certain style of of hiking and 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 mm. uh, being outdoors off the grid and that kind of thing. And, um, but it kind of, I mean, you, you take, you say, Hey, I want to go hike up a mountain, which is, which I've always enjoyed anyway. It's like, Oh, now let's add ham radio to the mix. And it makes it even more appealing, you know, to people like you and I. So yeah, I just, I sure. thought that was, uh, I thought that was a good, uh, a good, I, I think the program is very good. I, I put it that way. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. I thought of something I was going to ask and, and I interrupted you and you lost it. No, it's yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Oh, someone says in the chat, Possum Kingdom Lake has a soda summit. Really? Okay. That's not um that's not too far from me. That's like three hours from me. It's three yeah, two to three <laughs> hours from me, but um you know, hey, in Texas that's not far. So that's I, not far. Yeah, yes, yeah. I know. I've driven I've driven through that state. <laughs> yeah, but uh that's that's good. Okay, cool. So um Let's see. What's been, I guess, what's been the highest peak you've been on? I guess it'd have to be, at this point, I think it's just going to, it's going to be Humphrey's Peak, mm -hmm. which is the highest peak in Arizona, okay. which isn't even a, te a, a teener at all. You know, uh, uh, it's, it's oh, really? 12,600 feet or something like that. It doesn't okay. even get to the teens. Okay. So that's the highest and uh, I can give you altitude sickness even my my wife got altitude sickness up sickness up there both times we went up there mm. but it's not there I mean you know 14,000 feet is a, is a that's a grand peak to to activate I would think mm -hmm. <laughs> do do you find a lot of, I know, I remember the question I was going to ask you now do you find that I've tried to do FM simplex from Poda and it's just but if you're up on a peak it seems like it'd be easy do you find there's a lot of people that you can make contact with if you're for, on FM for Simplex, FM Simplex, yes, but it, I, I think it has to do with uh, creating a group of followers or or kind of having a group that supports that idea. Here yes. in in uh, the Phoenix metro area, we had a we have a group of uh, guy old timers that uh, were hanging out on a certain frequency. They, they used to do six meters all the time. And then they, that was way back, yeah. but they were there. It's a solid core group of people of probably five to 10 people that just uh, did that. And now they, they hang on this frequency and, the, and they kind of transition to soda. So you'll have easily five to 10 contacts. If you're within range of, of the Phoenix Metro area, mm -hmm. uh, every, every activation. So it, depending on whether they're out at the grocery store or went to get their coffee or whatever, but yeah. you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, but I have found in some areas that I've activated when I got on the national calling free frequency, 146.520, mm -hmm. in certain areas, even outside of in Arizona or outside of Arizona, and I have I couldn't even drum up one or two calls on on uh, mm. on two meter FM. It's 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 just strange. I think it has to do with the you know having a group that that is looking for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that was always I. That just seems like I mean. You know, obviously, you want to go up there and do HF and and see how long you can go and you know how how well your QRP works. That's <laughs> that's appealing to me as well. But doing FM Simplex just to say, yeah, I was on a summit peak and wow, we did FM Simplex. That was it. Just, that it's just another aspect that seems really cool. I always thought doing FM. Uh, I'm sorry, doing two meter sideband would be fun. Yes, uh, the 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 previous uh, live stream live stream that we just did, the guy mm -hmm. that uh, the guest I had on, that's what all he did. Okay. was a two meter sideband CW and, and, uh, FM that's, he didn't do HF at all. And he did a lot of sideband oh, FM. Really? Wow. And coincidentally, just this last weekend, just on Friday, uh -huh. I actually, I, I sent out an email to the Southern California guys and to the Arizona guys and told them, Hey, I, I'm going to have a beam up on a, on a hill here. Hmm. And I want to try two meter CW. Can you guys be looking for me? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what you have to do. You know, you can't just go out there and, and hope for the best. And so I right. kind of primed the pump for myself. I had a lot of fun. I had, uh, I don't know, between five and 10, uh, two meter 
CW contacts. Wow, that's it was great. One of them was 140 miles uh, to a to a guy in Tucson from from up north of of me. Okay. So that's fun. Yeah, that, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it sounds like it would be. Does does the summer we, uh, does the soda website have a spotter page? It does. And, you know, that's the thing. If you're a chaser, yeah. then you hang out on that page. And, yeah. and yeah, uh, most people who activate will, that's where they feed their uh, contact information, what summit they're going to be on, mm -hmm. what their frequency is, and um, their mode, and uh, their call sign. All that information is up there. And then when they move to the next band, they just post a new a new uh, right. spot out there. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's definitely how you got it. You have to rely on that. Uh, right. If you don't put an alert and a spot up on that page, then you're going to have a hard time. You're going to struggle. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, uh, if I remember correctly, I think we spotted ourselves when we were on that, uh, Mount, Mount Pacifico last year and, yeah. um, somebody did, I didn't do it, but, um, that's I'm actually sure. the first time I signed up. I've signed up shortly before I flew out there. And then I, I submitted my log as soon as I got home. So I've got, but that's my only activation. <laughs> hey, well, that's something there. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, and it, but it, it, it kind of like, you know, wets your whistle as it were to, uh, you know, I was like, Hey, this is what it's like. This is what I can do. And next time I go, I, I'll know a little bit better how to prepare for it and what I, yeah. you know, maybe take a couple of different antennas <laughs> or something like that. So, um, yeah. And was, you know, every peak is different. I have a, I have such a, a vast, approach different approach to different peaks if a peak is a drive up oftentimes i will just i'll go qro i mean mm -hmm. it, some people say hey you know that's not in the spirit of ham of uh summits on the air and i say if you can do it do it so right i'll do qro if a drive up if it's a long really hot long haul like a, a backpacking trip mm -hmm. i'll i'll take a sometimes one of them i just took a uh a, a, a yagi a two and a two meter rate, rate i didn't even take hf mm -hmm. It just depends on the peak, uh, what approach you're going to take. Sometimes I'll I'll only activate VHF and I'll get my you know five to ten contacts. I won't do HF at all, and I'll be I'll be gone. Weather has some stuff to do with that. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm on a tight schedule, mm -hmm. and then sometimes I'll plan on staying a whole day up on top of a mountain and trying to get you know as many, over a hundred contacts if I can, and and just kind of work every band and every mode, just you know go all out. So it really depends. That's probably something. I mean, you don't get any more points for that, but that's probably something that the the chasers really appreciate. I would imagine. Yes, you yeah. don't get any extra points for that, yeah. but it is exactly the chasers love that stuff. Right. You know, when you when you're out there for a long time, and again, it's 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 a challenge for you to see how many contacts you can get. Yeah. That's what I do a lot of times. See if I can I can break that to century mark. But a lot of times I'm testing stuff too. I want to see. I want to you know like the 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 uh, two meter CW thing. You mm -hmm. know, I just wanted to try it out and and sure. so. You know, you want to try to see maybe if you can get some DX sometimes with the, mm -hmm. with five watts. And, yeah, that's you know, there's there's all kinds of different ways to yeah. to make it enjoyable right. and for both you and and the chaser. Totally, totally, cool, man. Well, that I mean, it's it's definitely something worth uh, pursuing if you if you have access to something that's maybe close to you or maybe not. You know, if you just like going hiking, you know where to go for these peaks and whatnot. So, um, but what? Well, I mean. I, I, just just so the audience knows, because I already know the answer to this, but how would someone get started in SOTA if they were wanting to, you know, if they just got their HF or their general license and wanted to do, or you know what, even if they're a technician and they want to do the whole two meter thing, you know. I gotta say, you know, there's a lot of people out there having a lot of different opinions. My opinion is if you're interested in doing summits on the air, your first step should be to reach out to somebody who is an expert or not even an expert who's been on several mm -hmm. and ask them to come along. Mm -hmm. And I th hopefully they're willing to do that. I have, I've taken so many people out on a summit on their first summit. And, uh, it, I, I enjoy doing it because I, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's what the hobby's all about is, is sharing and giving right. back. Right. Right. And so, you know, if you want to get involved in summits on the air, I'm surely there's somebody that you know that you can reach out to and you can ask them, hey, can I come along? Mm -hmm. The benefit of that is you have an instant Elmer right there. And, you know, some people don't want to be glommed on and be an Elmer like all the time where you keep coming back to them. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to do that. You go on one summit, you'll you'll gather information that you won't you won't be able to gather, you know, over a phone call or even discussing in person. You'll see them set up. You'll see how they do it. You'll see what gear they bring along. And you'll see how they operate, and then and then afterwards you, you can ask them how to how to put the log in, and and you know I think that's the key, you know you, right. all this other stuff that people talk about, you know go on the website and 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 uh, watch this video and do that. I don't think that's nearly as important as just going with somebody. Yeah, that's a good point. 
That's a good point. Maybe I can get uh, <laughs> a name in the chat. She's like, anyone in Oregon want to come play radio with me? <laughs> There you go. That's the spirit. That's what it's all about right there. Uh, Oregon's probably got some really nice summits, I would imagine. So, uh, yes, they're, they do. I've, I've, uh, I've activated in Washington. I still want to get into Oregon. There's okay. another thing, you know, a lot of people like to activate, they're trying, you know, people have a goal to activate in every state. Right. And, you know, I, I think that some people are up to upwards of 15, 20 states, but That's some cool. of them don't have like, you know, there's some summits, like you said, that some states that don't have summits. So Yeah, yeah. My wife and I were going to, we had a trip to Hawaii planned. She yeah. uh, she flies a lot. I, yeah, she flies a lot for her job, or she did before this year. Um, so she's got, uh, she's always got airline miles she's racking up. And we've got a credit card that gives us airline miles. So we've, we've spent, uh, we've spent a good part of our marriage figuring out how to rack up airline miles on her account as much as we can so that we can take trips like that. So we'll fly to Hawaii, usually on miles, yeah. and, uh, and stay somewhere. And we were going to go out there this um, this last May, I think it was. In fact, she had got some sort of special priced package that she found somewhere. She does a lot of research on travel and whatnot. And, um, but, you know, COVID canceled all that anyway. But the place we were going to go back to... Um, Kauai, the island of Kauai, which yeah. we've been to once or twice. And I look, and that's not a very big island. And I looked and I'm like, okay, there's a park that's on the POTA website. There's another one and there's three summits right over here. So I'm like, I am so going to go do both POTA and soda when I'm on vacation. And she's like, you're going to do radio on vacation. I'm like, I'll do it all in a day. Okay. I'll just drive it. I'll do it all in a day. And then, uh, and then I'll put the radio down and we'll, we'll do it the rest of the time. Your wife I'm like, sounds it's like my wife. It's Hawaii. I've got to do it. Something. Come on. So yeah. my wife is very tolerant. We went to Hawaii yeah. and I said, I've got to do a soda peak here. Right. I'll never get back. And right. She's like you're getting, we're on vacation. <laughs> I, yeah. I was able to do it. She, she's a good sport. Yeah. Yeah. My, mine usually is too. She's like, Sometimes she's like, okay, can we have a radio list vacation? I'm like, yes, we can do that. But <laughs> if we go to Hawaii, to. that's not going to be that one. So, <laughs> so I'm all good. I'm all good with that. But, uh, yeah, but I, I did a, um, I did a, my, my wife and I also volunteer with a dog rescue, which I've talked about on my channel before. And I, I did a transport. We, I took like five or six, uh, dogs in a van where they rented this big van. I drove it up to, to Fort Collins, Colorado and dropped off these dogs and on my way back, I did all that, and it, it took about 12 hours to get there. So when I got there, I was tired and dropped off the dogs and went to sleep. And I got up the next day, and I brought my, because it's a rental car, so I don't have a, wire, a radio in it. So I brought my radio and my battery and set it all in the front seat, and I took a mag mount antenna and put it on, on the truck. And I, I activated two parks in Colorado, one park in, I think it was New Mexico. I think I came back, I think that was the route that I had chosen uh, New Mexico, and then one park in very northern Texas, where I, you know, it's not real close to me. On the way where all home, the mountains are right, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I looked up when I was, I was like, "This is Colorado. There's got to be a summit here." So I looked at. I didn't have time to do it on that trip, but if if I get to do another dog transport, there is a place up there that's that's a summit, just like kind of just north of Denver. I mean, there's probably a few of them, but the one I was looking at was just north of Denver. And I'm like, what I should do is just buy an extra day on the rental car and then park it on the summit after I drop off the dogs and park it on the summit and hike up there and stay there overnight and then and then drive back home. So I might do that something like, like that. That sounds like a beautiful plan. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I might try something like But doing, doing That's the... That's the way a sort of guy thinks. <laughs> well, I, uh, I just think that it would be... It, it, doing the parks was fun. You know, even though I, I didn't get out of the car, because with POTA, you can do that. You just have to pull into the park. You can do it all from your vehicle. You don't have to set up or be a certain distance like you do on soda. Um, so I just, you know, I hit four parks on the way home. And I'm like, hey, I've got that many more points. Yeah. Um, but uh, but doing a summit, t t taking a little bit more time to plan. And uh, as far as, not necessarily as far as gear, but about timing, to make sure you time it right. Make sure the weather's good. You got to make sure it's not thunderstorming or something like that um and do that do a summit like that would be really fun because i'm not in colorado every day so i'm yeah. like if i'm gonna go to colorado again i'm gonna take advantage of this <laughs> yeah yeah this so. sounds like my trip to washington i i, I went uh, my my uh, company sent me to washington mm -hmm. for a training out there 
and I, uh, I told him, hey, I want to go a day early. Uh, can, can you book the flight a day early? I'll pay for the hotel the, that extra day. And mm-hmm. so they did. And so I, I flew out there and I immediately got off the airplane and rented a car and drove to a summit and hiked to the top of the summit, got back down, drove the car back and made it to the conference that I was supposed to be at with maybe an hour to spare. <laughs> and when I got home, I told my wife that I had rented a car to, to, just to, just to activate one summit. And, uh, <laughs> She, she didn't think that was too wise. She didn't think like a soda person. <laughs> uh, wait, yeah, that's not, that wasn't too wise. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, well, you know, you, you do what you can. I mean, yeah, when are you going to be in Washington again? You do what you can, I guess. That's exactly right. So, huh, cool. Well, it's it's definitely a fun <laughs> aspect of the hobby. I really enjoyed that, that one that I did. I want to do more um, kind of kind of along the same lines of, of POTA, but challenging in different ways. So one, I don't think one's necessarily better than the other, but depending on what you want to do, I mean, being up, and man, you really, you you and Adam both get some really beautiful video footage when you're up on some of these peaks. I'm like, man, I'm just, I looked at that one that you did, uh, I guess it was this most recent one where- Turk's Head? I'm sorry? I think it was Turk's Head, right? I don't remember was the it? name of the peak, but I remember you were on two meter FM- yeah. Two meter simplex it. with a Yagi the whole time. Yeah. 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 That was a great view. It wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That was an excellent view. I was, I was, I think it was a premiere. We were, we were, uh, me and ape and a couple of the other guys were in there. I was like, Oh yeah, that looks like North Texas in the chat when it's <laughs> like, that looks nothing like North Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but it was, yeah. uh, but I mean it, yeah. I mean, some of, some of those videos you, you have, you've got where you just hike up there. I'm just like, man, I gotta go yeah. do this just for the just for the scenery. If even if nothing else, if just for the scenery, yeah. it'd be fun to do. Yeah, that's exactly you know what I said earlier. Is I, I just wanted to share that you know there's, just, there's some really a fantastic stuff out there that you know you'll never get to see. Some people never get to see, and then mm-hmm. and and you know I, I don't want to document it. So so yeah, I mean it's not just about the the ham radio aspect of it. I totally love hiking. My wife and I are backpackers. We go on on backpacking trips. We're gonna go to the Grand Canyon and do a three day stay down at the bottom of the grand canyon here nice. coming up soon and so yeah we just like the outdoors hmm. yeah i've i like the outdoors also my wife tolerates it but when i told her i wanted to go hiking she, she her ears kind of per, per, uh, perked up because she doesn't really care about she doesn't care about going to the hunting lease and she doesn't care about rving uh, yeah. which i which i enjoyed but when i told her i wanted to do some hiking she's like yeah, I might, I might be interested in that. So cool. maybe that's something that we could, we could kind of work on together. And she's a yeah. ham. She's a ham. What? She's got her license. She's only a tech, but she came to me like a couple of months ago and she's like, what book should I buy if I want to get my general upgrade? And I'm like, you should watch my videos, honey. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, amazing. That's cool that she's, but, a, she's a ham. Yeah, she is. Yeah. So, so she, and she's, she's interested in getting her general. Cause I told her that if she got her general, we would bring her field, which we could bring in her field day anyway, because she can work on the club call. But I was like, we bring her to field day and just have you call CQ the whole time. And then just someone will spot, <laughs> someone will log for you. Cause everybody wants to talk to a woman over the air, right? Oh, so, so true. So true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I have seen that in wor- at work many times. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so cool, man. All right, Charlie. Hey man, I really appreciate you coming on tonight. Do you, uh, any, um, any final thoughts or uh, any kind of yes, advice? Or I had anything? one final thought. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. And that was, <clears throat> I just wanted to express the appreciation to not only you, but to Jason and to all the guys in the YouTubers group or the hammer, you know, whatever you guys want to call yourselves, <laughs> whether it's the YouTubers group or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the collective has really helped me in a lot of ways, not just getting my uh, YouTube channel on on the air and get it, get it, you know, developed and going. I meant, I heard you mention, you know, that you're, you have this new channel coming out uh, where you're help, helping people do that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, get their, get a channel started. And, and I just want to endorse that. I haven't even looked at the channel yet, but, but it's such a great idea. Uh, the wealth of knowledge that we have and that, uh, that has been shared with me has, has been tremendous. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but just the friendships that I've, uh, I think I've, I'm starting to form and, and, and it's just, I just can't express enough appreciation to the whole group. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody and, uh, and I appreciate, you know, uh, the support. Cool. Well, it's good to have you on board for sure. Um, 
what I say, and this is kind of, this is sort of, I'll talk from a YouTube perspective for a moment. Uh, this is sort of what I've said to other people, um, both about ham radio and about topics outside of ham radio. So I, t I told this story, I I'll be really brief with this. So I went to, it was about two years ago, I went to Las Vegas for a YouTubers conference. It was kind of like a video marketing conference type thing. And, um, and I stayed and I have a friend out there who works in the IT department at the Hard Rock uh, Cafe Hotel that's there. So he got me his friends and family discount at, at, at that hotel. But the conference I was going to, I was going to was another hotel down the, it was, it was all in the strip in, in Las Vegas. It was like a 10 minute Uber ride. So I get in the uh, Uber, I call the Uber the first morning I'm there. I get in the Uber and this, this guy, this Uber, talk, Uber driver, he's one of these guys that wants to talk to you the whole time. Uh, really nice guy. And he's like, what are you in town for? And I said, well, I'm, I'm, in, I'm going to a YouTube co a conference about how to build YouTube and how to do videos. And he's like, man, I've always wanted to do that because he's been driving. He, he used to drive taxis and, um, and now he drives Uber. He's been driving in Las Vegas for, I think he said like 10 years. So he's like, he knows all this stuff about where to go, where the locals go, where the good, you want to get good seafood. Oh, well, maybe they don't have good seafood, but he knows all that information. Um, and he's like, yeah, but Las Vegas is a popular place, and uh, there's probably too many channels out there about that already. And I, I, here's what I told him. And this is what I tell people who want to, who come to me and said, um, I've had a little bit of this, but a little bit more since I started that other channel. People that say, I want to do a ham radio YouTube channel, but there's already someone out there doing soda. There's already someone out there doing DMR. There's already somebody doing, you know, how to do HF or how to do CW. It doesn't matter. Because no one else has your unique perspective. Your unique perspective about how you do this, that, and the other is going to be totally different than anybody's. Like the we did a we did a, a, a we did a G ninety night on Monday Night Ham Radio a couple months ago, and I think there were six or seven of us that that had videos that night. It was the same topic on every video, but everybody did it differently. Yep. Some people used it. Some people just went through the menus and explained it. Some people. I mean, there was there was different things for from everybody, and so <clears throat> if you want to do a YouTube channel and you want to share your ham radio knowledge, I think that's an excellent way to do it. And I really kind of applaud all the guys who are who are serious about who want to contribute because because sometimes on social media you get some negative comments and stuff, and that's just and that's everywhere. That's not just ham radio. That's just social media, but. You know, there's a lot of people who may not comment, but if you ask them a question about, well, if you're interested in a ham radio YouTube channel, you know, hit me up. And I got, like yeah. I said, I got like four emails and I was surprised. I was like, ah, nobody's going to take me up on this. Yeah. I might. Well, that's the, I have to say, that's the, yeah. the, the thing that I admire about you and all these other guys that, uh, in, in our group is that you don't feel threatened mm -hmm. by bringing more people on. It's quite the opposite. You want to you want to bring more people on because of that. You want better perspective. You want to grow the hobby. And I, I think my hat is my hat is off to you guys that you you want to share your ideas and you want to bring me more people in instead of looking at it as a competition and a, a threat. Yeah. No, it's definitely. I mean, you know, we have fun when we got together at Dayton last year in 2019. We have we have fun poking poking fun at one another. It's like, oh well, I got more subs than you do. I got more subs, <laughs> but it's all just you know. It's it, yeah. It, you're right. It's not a competition. I mean, it's it's. I tell people I compete with myself. I want to make better videos than the videos I made this time last month or last year. And if I'm if I'm if I feel like I'm doing that and I'm growing in my own knowledge and then I'm sharing that knowledge, then I've I've already I'm already winning. I'm already beating, I'm beating myself, and that's all that counts for for me. Yeah. You know, some people may be a little bit more competitive about it, but most of the guys in the YouTubers bunch and and in our in our uh, Discord chat that we have, you know, they don't think that, and, and pretty much all of those guys would help you in any way that you want to, and help a new guy in any way that they at, that they could about different topics. And it's really cool because I tell people that um, ham radio is a narrow niche. Because most people, a lot of people, don't know what it is, and people would be like, "Whoa, is that that thing?" My grandpa used to do that. He used to get up in the morning and talk to Japan. And he had this big tower in his backyard. Is that what it is? And yeah, that's kind of what it is. And oh yeah, didn't the internet kill that? No, it didn't kill you know and that kind of thing. So people don't know what it is. But once you actually get inside of it, you realize that because because one of the questions I got asked after that video was, "Well, I want to I want to do a I want to do a 
something, and I can't even remember what he said right now. He's like, if I wanted to do a channel about 220 sideband, I probably wouldn't get but three or four watchers. And I'm like, well, that's probably true. But you can get, like, you focus on soda, and my original focus was usually DMR, and some guys focus on DMR, other guys focus on kit building, other guys focus on, M Mike does parks on the air stuff, so there's a lot of the aspects within the hobby that, and you don't have to do all, you're just like, I just want to do what interests me, well good, then share that knowledge with someone. Yeah, it's very vast, the hobby is so vast. It really yeah. is, and, and yeah, and it's actually growing, because the implementation of Raspberry Pis and computers and and all this other kind of stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff you can do both on and off the air on internet connected or no. I mean, you know, like um, RIDI and FT8 and everything over the air with with computer technologies is really great yep. too. So, yep. cool, man, Charlie. I appreciate you coming on tonight, man. It's always good yeah. to get someone else's perspective yeah, and um, and having uh, somebody more knowledgeable than myself about certain <laughs> topics is always good to talk to because I mean you've obviously done a lot more soda than i've ever done and uh and maybe one of these days when this virus lifts i can actually take a trip out to arizona and i'll have you take me to that peak that you were just talking about absolutely so yeah that'd be, that'd be anybody fun to do. anybody it's, it's open to anybody yep yeah yeah totally totally all right well I, uh, you guys um you guys i just shared uh, charlie's channel in the chat i'll share it again it's right there you guys go go subscribe to red's uh Red Summit RF. I keep wanting to call it Red RF Summit, <laughs> but uh, Red Summit RF on on YouTube. And uh, and Charlie, I really appreciate you being here tonight, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you yep. so much. You bet. No problem at all. All right, guys, we're gonna switch over here, and I'm going to. Where is that screen? I got uh, right there. So let me say a special thank you to my patrons, real quick. Uh, Jim Biles, I think is how, I think that's, did I write that? I bet I, bet I mistyped that. Jim, <laughs> Jim and Dan Burick are, uh, two of my newest patrons that just signed up recently. Uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash ham radio and, uh, support there does help to support and grow the channel. And I'm planning on some new activities with just the patrons starting in January, 2021. Got a couple of new thing, new ideas. I'm going to run by you guys uh, so be watching on the Patreon page for um, some upcoming Zoom sessions and some new stuff that's just going to be patrons only. So special thanks to all the people on this list uh, for your continued support of, of the channel and helping it grow and helping it push forward because it does enable, you know, growth is always a good thing and I want to expand my horizons and doing it um, through Patreon is, is one it takes takes money to make the world go round, and um, definitely uh, appreciate all the support I get from all of you out there for that. This coming, let me switch to, yeah, that right there. This coming Wednesday, I've been doing um, lunchtime live streams on Wednesdays at noon for about the past, I don't know, since May, roughly. I think it was May when I started it. So I'm going to kick off something new. This is going to be the first time I've done this. This lunchtime live stream, this coming Wednesday, one, two, three days from now, I had to count, um, is going to be, it's going to be live and open. Everyone's going to be able to watch it, but there's a chat feature inside of YouTube where only channel members can chat. So I can turn that off and on. Never done this before. Totally new experiment. So if you are a YouTube channel member, this is your opportunity to come into the chat, and we're just going to talk about what you guys want to see on the channel upcoming. What do you want to see, you know, this uh, this Christmas season and next year um, when we get away from this whole lockdown thing? What kind of uh, topics and videos would you guys as YouTube channel members, because YouTube channel members are a huge part of the channel as well, so be looking for that. That's um, I planned that out today. It's still in unlisted status, but it'll be posted probably tomorrow uh, as a pre-planned stream for noon on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. So, guys, I appreciate everyone being in the chat tonight. Really appreciate that Charlie uh, NJ7F for coming on. You guys, be sure and go check out his channel on uh, on YouTube and uh, subscribe to him and give him a, give him a thumbs up. On uh, he just did a live stream and was talking about some uh, some soda stuff on the live stream right before this one started. So you can go watch that on the replay put comments in there and um 
say uh, say you know give him a give him a thumbs up and thank him for coming on tonight. So let's just make sure that there's nothing else in the chat here. Thanks, Chris, for being here. A name, a name. Thanks for being here. Kyle, I saw you in there earlier. I sorry I didn't say anything to you. Uh, Smoking Apes in there, sharing the YouTube playlist for Two Meter Night tomorrow night, Monday Night Ham Radio. That's going to be fun. I'll be in all those chats. So hope you guys can join us there. And um, just want to say uh, 73 to everybody. Everyone have a good Christmas holiday. You're going to be... Oh, almost forgot. Um... Friday, five days from now, this coming Friday at 8 p.m. I haven't scheduled the stream yet. This coming Friday at 8 p.m. is our next Ham Radio Happy Hour. Done that for the last two months. This will be the third month. It's usually the second Friday of the month. And so we're going to do Ham Radio Happy Hour this month. If you want to participate with us, send me an email. KC5HWB at gmail.com. I'm a little bit kind of, I kind of um, reluctant to put some guys are you know christian from 100 watts and wire has been live streaming every saturday morning he puts the link to his stream yard in and zoom chat in the in his youtube chat and hey you know what more power to him i don't think he's ever had a problem with it but with all the zoom bombing that used to happen earlier this year i'm kind of reluctant to share that link sometimes but if i know who you are i'll send you the link so if you want to come on and drink a beer and talk to us about uh ham radio in general 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is um, 2 a.m. UTC Saturday morning. This coming, or next weekend. 2 a.m. UTC Saturday morning, next weekend. Uh, Ham Radio Happy Hour for the third month in a row. We're going to keep it going. It's going to be a fun time. Hope to see you tomorrow night on Monday Night Ham Radio, on the Wednesday live stream and the Friday live stream. You guys have fun. Thanks for being here tonight, and uh, be sure to go subscribe to Charlie's channel. 73 all.